Hello, Ana Miares. Thank you for agreeing to be one of our judges. And um, I would love for you to just give a brief introduction about your studio and about how you got into photography. So I started as a photographer when I was two with a Fisher Price uh, camera. It, I didn't know it didn't have real film in it. So I started back in the film days. My uncle was a photographer for the Tribune. So he taught me all of my basic technical skills. And then in high school, I was the school photographer, the principal's photographer. And when I went to college, I took a photography class to learn um, black and white skills for developing. And I had a really bad experience with the teacher. And I got chicken to do it as a career because I was afraid to do it, to have to do it versus want to do it. So I kind of went the safe route and did advertising um, and marketing. And then I realized that I was neglecting the talent that God had given me. I ended up taking a class in Italy with a photographer that I super admired all through my advertising career. And that's where I kind of had an, an epiphany to do it full time and just dive right into it. I was supplementing my photography work doing the art festivals, the juried art fairs in Chicago. So that gave me kind of the, the boost that I needed and the confidence that people were interested in my work. That was fine artwork, it wasn't portrait work, which is what I specialize in now, but it did give me the confidence to tell my advertising career, let me, let me give photography a shot. And I gave it a shot and that was 19 years ago and I haven't looked back. Great. All right, so some of what you'll be judging are young people. What advice would you give to somebody in high school or in college or maybe even younger who really loves photography and might be thinking about whether or not it's something they want to do? Um, I would, I would have them hone in on, um, on what, what of photography they are interested in doing, whether it's architectural, whether it's pet photography, whether it's food photography, whether it's portrait photography, landscapes. So kind of hone in on what area of photography you wanna do. And then even um, find photographers and see if you can um, shadow them, spend a day with them to see what their 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 day-to-day -day is in that realm of photography. So if it's a portrait photographer, go and spend the day at the studio with them or go on an assignment with them or they're going to an ad agency to do portraits or whatnot and really shadow somebody and learn from them. I feel like my biggest mistake as a photographer, because I already had it, had one career and then jumped into photography, is that I never went and I assisted any of the great, the great photographers in my industry where I could have learned a zillion, a zillion different skills from them instead of learning by error on my own or having to figure it out or take a workshop on my own, which was great in its own right. But, you know, the classic way to, to, to do it is to go to school for, for it, you know, an art school. And it doesn't have to, you don't have to limit yourself just to photography, you know, any, you know, painting or sculpture or anything that just gets your juices in your mind going for inspiration that can take you into your photography then go shadow or be an assistant with a photographer and then do your own career from there. I think that that's the classic way to go. It takes a little bit longer, but you don't have as much of a, um, a hurdle when you're, you know, doing it on your own and trying to, to reinvent the wheel on your own. No, oh, that's great. And I think that one of our prizes, in fact, for some of the kids who are doing this is a chance to shadow photographers for a day, some of our judges. Okay. All right. And so then the last question is, so, you know, I know you work diligently and your work is beautiful. How, where do you go for inspiration? What do you do to inspire yourself as an artist? So that's probably the hardest thing. Um, I find inspiration in everything. People are always looking at me and they're like, why are you looking at me funny? And I'm, you know, I'm a portrait photographer. So anytime I look at a human being, I'm looking at you know, how's the light hitting them? How do they look against that beautiful, you know, beach view or whatever it is, I'm constantly envisioning an image and it drives people crazy, but I find my inspiration when I walk, when I see anything. Um, I find my inspiration in the classic painters. I'll go to the museum and see you know, what did, um, what did, what did Monet do here, even if it doesn't have a person in it? How did he use the light to, for, for the composition? Uh, so I'm constantly looking at other forms of art, everyday motion of people. 
Um, and then I'm also, there's a lot of great things online now. So now there's something called Creative Live and I can just plug in uh, black and white portraits of all women and I can see a zillion different classes of portraits, whether they're environmental outside or inside in a studio. And I could, you know, get inspiration hours and hours and hours, especially during COVID when you have nothing to do, you know, you got YouTube as your best friend to, to learn about anything and everything. So that's where I kind of get my inspiration. And the most important thing is creating a personal project for yourself, which is the hardest thing for a photographer to do because you have to literally tell yourself, what am I going to do this month or year that's going to be my own project to help me grow as a photographer step outside my comfort zone of what i would normally shoot or how i would normally light a person or situation and and learn something new because we get stuck in our ways and we get stuck in our f-stops and our exposures because it works and it's you don't have to use your brain but stepping outside your comfort zone and saying, I'm going to try and recreate this light or this feeling or this composition, that's the best thing you can do for yourself because you will always, you'll learn something. And when you learn, you, you grow. So. Well, thank you so much for giving us this time. And again, thank you for being one of our judges. I'm looking forward to the competition. And I am too. And, uh, and the show then that runs in December at the museum. Perfect. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Well, you are welcome.